<clears throat> oh, so it's on. All right, so I've just finished uh, my C++ and HTML studies. So I want to show you what I learned along the way. So let's start with HTML first of all. So here's the folder uh, that I have all the HTML files in. So you can open any HTML file. Say I want to open this index. You can open it with a browser, of course. So I need to first select this. Okay. You can open this with a notepad or any text editor, in fact. So this is what uh, a basic HTML file looks like in text. And if I just double click on the file, it will open it uh, with a browser. And in this case, it's Chrome. So this is my index page. It's index.html. It's going to be your first file. Index.html will be the first file in a in um, in a website because uh, that's where that's where the uh, home page of the website will be. Okay, and so we don't actually want to open everything in Notepad. That's it's not the best uh, text editor for this job. So instead, we can use something else. Say like which was Studio Code, which I use. All right, it will take some time. So yeah, here it says open a folder. So I will open a folder. And desktop, the folder was HTML. So I want to open this folder. Okay, cool. So let's start with uh, the first basic Hello World program, or I should say Hello World uh, web page. Right, because it's not exactly program over here, right? So as you can see, these texts they got highlighted colored because of the text editor. This is a comment, right? This complete thing. So comments are not passed by uh, the web page, sorry, the web browser. Uh, the, the HTML file basically looks something like this. You have these HTML tags. So uh, opening tag HTML, closing tag HTML, and inside of those tags, you can write everything that you want for the uh, web page. So you can have a head tag like this thing, which contains all the stuff that gives information to the browser about uh, your web page. And you have this body tag. So opening body, something inside it, uh, closing body, right? This thing, this uh, whatever is in this thing that will be displayed um, on your web page. Okay, so that's like a very basic thing, but Let's go to something else. Let's first of all see what happens with the head. So the code in head tags is not displayed but read by the browser. So for example, you can use a title over here. So you can say uh, opening title tag uh, and this is like head tag is the title of the web page and closing title tag. So why though you want to write a title? If I just run a file without giving a title, what's the problem with that? So if I run this thing, yes, Chrome. If I run this file, hello world.html, you can see that the uh, that on the title bar it it writes hello world.html, which is the name of the file. But uh, for this thing, um, for other file that I was looking at, which is head, right? Yeah. So over here I have written what title it should have. So if I run this file instead, it won't uh, just show the file name. It, it will instead show head tag, which is the title that we set. Okay, so no problem with that. Now let's go to something else. Let's go to body, which is where most of the stuff happens. So this is body.html. So in body, you can create paragraphs, which is uh, using these P tags, right? This is opening tag P, which has a closing tag P over here. So the stuff in the paragraph, which is text, of course, is just written like that. But whenever you open and close a paragraph uh, line, like new lines will be added. So you write this line of text, then you open uh, the paragraph with this opening tag, it will create a new line. And then everything over here, all this text, it will be uh, written after that. And then you you close this so it it like once again 
uh, it just creates a new line. Yeah. So that's what the paragraph tag does. It's just written P. And then you have BR, which means break. So it's essentially a new line. Then you have HR, which creates a horizontal line, uh, which is basically to uh, separate contents of the web page into two sections or three sections. You get it. Then you have headings. So these headings, they are not the ones that you uh, have in head tag. No, instead, I mean, those are somewhat like it. So these will be displayed. These will be displayed on the web page. And also these will be read by the browser. So uh, the priority is like H1 will be read first and it will be given the maximum priority, then H2, then H3, so on till H6. And H1 is also the biggest uh, heading. So it in, in display as well, it is the biggest. It has the largest uh, size. Right. And let's go to something else. Let's go to HTML entities. This is another thing that you should know. Oh, okay. First, before that, you should know text editing, basic text editing. So, okay, let's start with this attributes. So over here, uh, this, these paragraph tags, so you have this P and you have some uh, weird stuff, align equal to left with that. Then you have some text inside it. And then finally you have this paragraph uh, ending tag. So what does this text do? It has a line equal to left, uh, which means that all of this stuff, it will, uh, it will be aligned with the left margin. And then if I write a line equal to center, it will be aligned in the center. If I write a line equal to right, it will be aligned to the right margin. And yeah, and then there's also something called justify. So this alignment, what it does is that it spreads out the words so that it it like reaches both the margins. So if I run this file, let's see what it does. Okay, so you have this heading. Let's just inspect this. Okay, why why do we even inspect this? I'm just gonna do this thing. All right. So, uh, restore. Oh, this is better. Yeah, I don't want that. So, uh, HTML starting tag, then head. We have not, not written anything in head. Uh, then body. So, you have some text, random text over here, which as you can see is copied over here. So, this is the text. Right. Then there's a break, which, which creates a new line. So, uh, now it starts from here. Okay, cool. Then, then you have a paragraph with alignment equal to left. So it it's basically for this thing, right? So this text, this text is aligned to the left and then this text is aligned to right. So this is the other paragraph with alignment uh, being right. And then you have a horizontal line, right? You can, uh, you can change this guy's attributes as well. So you can, change its size to six, width to 60%. Size refers to the thickness of the line in pixels, which is like how thick this is. And uh, width 60%, that just means that it's covering 60% of the, uh, of the total, of the total breadth of the browser. Uh, any other attributes that we changed? No, we didn't put anything else. Okay, cool. And then you have these headings. So align equal to center. That's why the first heading is uh, in the center and not like not exactly close to the left margin starting from there. No, it's in the center. Then center, it, it obviously makes it aligned to the center. Heading has align as an attribute. Then align equal to justify. It does this thing. As I told you, it justifies the text so that it reaches both the margins. Okay, cool. Then you have once again a line equal to justify and yeah like justify makes test text stretched to give smooth margin automatically so that's pretty nice and we'll just close this thing and yeah okay so we don't need this file anymore let's go to some other file so we got attributes done so attributes are basically like 
uh, changing properties of how the tags work like you change some stuff actually just open this once again because there's text that I want to explain so every tag has some attributes which has like default values right and uh, by changing these uh, we change how a tag works so some tags have compulsory attributes like anchor tag yeah so you you need to put that attribute for that to work uh, but other than that you can like just not give the attributes and it will just work but it just it just works fine but then it doesn't give you the effect that you want okay so that's attributes we also want text formatting so this is the meat of the thing it it's really like what what makes your web page good so first of all how to make text bold and italic and underline well let's buy these tags b i u then you can also use this tags anywhere inside a paragraph inside a heading then there's something called the pre tag so this tag per uh, pre formats the text to a monospace form so it's useful for creating lists and what do you mean by mono uh, monospace form actually you just run this and that will maybe show you what I want all right so the text in the game is no that's not wrong. yeah this thing this tag uh, preformats the text to a monospace form so this thing is called a monospace form right so like no matter what I write in there so even if I uh, say write a lot of like spaces like that and then if I run and debug you would expect that there would be spaces right and there is like this space over there so monospace it should actually not do that but well whatever I think but yeah it like changes this a little it does its own thing whatever it does yeah whatever okay we don't actually have to put all of these spaces yeah okay cool oh oh okay okay now i get what actually went wrong i should have saved this maybe that's why it didn't work in fact let's go for spaces once again i think i remember that they said it should uh like format it completely cut down all the spaces and stuff but yeah there is actually spaces over there huh i don't know maybe maybe it just doesn't work that way who knows so that's pre-format tag who knows what it does i think i don't know then you have this address so the text in this is recognized as our address info by search engine of browser so once again not really something that we want to go into uh, this em this is for text to speech so text to speech will give emphasis on the stuff in this thing strong tag once again something about text to speech okay so then you have yeah this is an important thing now you're starting into lists so the first kind of list is an unordered list so unordered list you just uh, once again show you what this is so uh, this complete thing this with the bulletins and everything this thing is an unordered list so if I were to mark these yes yeah, so everything over here this is part of uh, this list ul so you uh, make a list by using these ul tags so an order list opening an order list closing and then you make the list elements by these li tags so this creates an unordered list right ul tag and this is an this is a list element and then you can inside of the list element you can put anything you can put a paragraph you can maybe put inline images you can uh, put other lists and type is a is an attribute of the ul tag so you can change the type of the uh, list so you can have a circle at the front of text you can have a square you can have a disk at the front of text uh, the one that we saw was having disk at the front of it and 
yeah like it, it it can be changed manually and it also changes by default whenever you make nested lists so ol this creates an order list so in that uh, you can use either these things which is normal numbers so if i say type equal to the uh, type equal to inverted comma one inverted comma that will basically say that i want to use uh, normal numbers for uh, for like the bulletin <laughs> uh, is it even called bulletins i don't know so i want to put normal numbers in front of the text and small a that will be like uh, small alphabets in front of the text so the first line that will have small a in front of it then you have small b and so on then capital a you guessed it capital alphabets small i uh, small roman numbers capital i capital roman numbers okay cool and there is also a start attribute which sets the beginning of numbers in a list so if i say start equal to 420 it will just start with from 420 directly so it will be like 420 421 422 instead of being 1 2 3 4 i should actually show this to you in fact let's not reload this so many times yeah so uh this is thing uh right so start equal to 420 this is a this is an order list this this one right this is the order list that we were looking for uh yes and that is in fact inside another list yeah it's like so it's a nested order list anyway so it does this thing there is also the start attribute with which sets the beginning of the numbers of this so you have this whatever this means in it's like in roman numbers and yes yeah, so like it starts from 420 then 421 422 and here i have put this element value equal to 66 so then it will change this value to 66 and the next value to 67 and so on and then what and then you close this order list okay and this was obviously in a list element because it was nested and then you close the actual bigger list which has these one two three four uh as the heading thing okay then you have definition list so that's this thing like definition list is plain a term uh definition format you have term one definition one like this then you have term two definition two so you have to put it under it so dt that's uh definition list term so you put term one that will do this thing and then right next to it you can put a dt so it's a definition definition uh which gives the definition of the first term and then so on so you just need to alternate this thing and you will have a list like this okay cool and yeah that's pretty nice and then you have a uh, subscript and superscript so this is normal text right it's not written with subscript or super superscript and this is a uh, text written inside the subscript tags so it's sub then slash sub so everything written in that will be subscripted this will be superscripted right that's no problem and then you have br which is okay that's just uh, another break over there all right and then you have this font tag which is uh apparently not appreciated in html5 right that's what they said when i searched for this thing like how to use this they say that you can use css properties instead but yeah like the textbooks which i was learning from they said use this tag this will give you marks so yeah <laughs> the thing is uh you can change size color and like the face of the font stuff stuff like that and you you have to change size in a size relative to normal text format so like default default is plus one i think yeah so oh, default is plus three yeah uh yes default is plus three small okay whatever so default is plus three and changing uh changing the size to say plus four that will increase the size okay then you have uh the big i think this is not right like how can default be plus three i think it should be zero 
so instead let's just try to put plus 3 over there and see what we get so control s and now we'll reload this thing so this got shrinked as you can see but this is still bigger than normal text so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put size as plus zero oops zero and okay then control s and run this thing and yeah now it's like normal text okay cool so in fact yeah like size equal to zero that is the normal size and i should actually change this thing so so the plus zero is the uh, default value okay and then there are tags which can automatically change this i mean just this size without uh, changing anything else so you can use a big and small tag which set font size as plus one and minus one so you can do like big 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 maybe that will add a who knows okay cool and then you have text uh, has line drawn through it it's the strike tag which is over here so the stuff in that has a line drawn through it cool and these are the uh, big and small tags the display from that and then you have mark v which is like a breaking news this thing happened something like that so it's a rolling text uh okay that's nice so now we know how to format text let's uh we don't want this thing but let's go to something else so text formatting that's pretty it's pretty nice let's go to tables because that's also a part of text formatting in fact so let's maximize this thing so you can also make tables so talk type html just that's just to say that this file will be an html file it is not even necessary it's optional why don't we just like delete this it, it won't do anything like okay so you have uh normal stuff over there html oh actually i didn't put body over there but i should have put body i think so i'll just uh change this d o d y uh no not the not the ending tag i don't want the ending tag okay and then after the table i want to end my body so ah uh, why does it do this thing okay cool so print this let's see what it did yeah and now if i try to run this thing it should give us a table yeah it gives us a table if i just maximize this thing this is what the tables uh, table actually looks like let's see how it got to this and how uh, i made this so let's go to the start which is the table tag so inside a table tag you have these attributes width align border cell spacing cell padding and i will explain each of these first of all cell spacing decides the space between each cell and cell padding decides the space between the contents of the cell and cell border so notice that uh, there is a cell border uh, for each cell so every cell will be contained inside a box and the like the border of that box uh, that can be visible or not visible if i just set width equal to zero that will make the borders invisible but they will still be there and cell spacing it decides the space between each cell so it decides the space between these borders but cell padding that decides the space between the cell content and the border so it makes uh, the cells bigger basically border attribute creates border around cells and table if value is one and uh, one or more uh, and doesn't if zero yeah and then you have width width can take value uh, as a percentage of browser width or as a number of pixels so right now i've set width as 1000 and say if i set this to i don't know like uh let's say 30 percent okay cool and if i save this thing control s and i run this it 
now it's just 30 percent of the whole so if you notice uh, very very neatly this complete thing it's just 30 percent of that okay so that's it's pretty nice uh yeah that's good and all so now you know uh, how to change the attributes of a table but what does the table contain well first of all it can contain a caption which is basically text that is not part of the table but shown above or below it then it can have a heading so a heading is like as you guessed it, it it's different from normal rows so this is a heading row and then inside the heading you will have to have those cells so a cell is represented by td which is like table data so i have uh, these things in my cells which is present uh, reason provided health condition improve i don't know just put random text over there so it creates a header row and inside that row these are the cells and spacing will be set accordingly by default okay then then you have a normal table row which contains uh, a normal like normal values the normal data this is a normal row in the table so you have this table data it it also has attributes so you can set the background color of a cell you can uh, say the alignment of the text you can tell like how many rows do you want your cell to span into so that's of course when the other cell isn't occupying space okay and yeah and then you have a uh, v align which is like vertical alignment so it can have like top, center, bottom, these values. Uh, then you have column span for our table data uh, table data tag. So it tells us how many columns uh, does a cell want to span into if uh, it is going to span right if you want it. To. If there's like something else that's taking its place, you don't want it to be spanning. And but well, that's nice. You can also set the height of the rows and heading of course the header rows as well so it will set the height of all of the uh, cells at the same time so that was about tables it's not very exciting till yet i know but it's gonna get exciting just bear with me so text formatting done now you know how to create tables you know what like how to create a website i mean a folder for a website like what head and body tags do what are the basic attributes let's go to say color this is also something about uh, text formatting you can say it's like text formatting but it's a little different it's just about color there's not much about the text in there apart from this thing of course so this thing text equal to uh, these whatever this thing is it sets the color what is this thing uh, this thing is an RGB value and a RGB value So it's in hexadecimal and uh, this particular RGB value. It's for white So it's literally saying that the text just make it white and the background color make it line so you can pass um, RGB values or actual names uh, of the color into these um, attributes and that makes it work and of course you have font as well so you can you already know that you can set color through font and yeah that's not a problem so let's let's run this and see what it does we already know what it's going to do yeah so it makes this whole thing line it changes the color of the text you i mean the font tag it changes the colors of the text then this thing is white because we said that to be white and yeah that's like a nice looking page but doesn't actually contain any content so that's nice and now we get into the more exciting stuff so let's go to images so how do you create images you use the image tag of course so the image tag it has an attribute called uh, source so it basically like decides from where are we taking the image 
So for this case, we are taking it from C users G desktop. This is like a folder, and from that you have this file 10 prefactor.png. Here you and uh, here I'm using .png, but like ideally you want to use like I don't know dot dot jpg and dot uh, gif. Those are pretty popular and most browsers use them. So uh, let's read this thing. Image tag creates inline images which are inserted within a line of the body text. What that means is that the images uh, they are treated as if they were words in a in a paragraph or in any like line of text. And yeah, like that's why they're called inline images. So source, you know what this thing does now. Uh, what is this ALT? ALT means uh, alternate. And in this case, it means alternate text. So it basically tells us uh, if for some reason your image cannot be displayed uh, or if it's loading at that point, what do you want to display instead of the image? So SRC takes in the image source and ALT takes in the text to be displayed if image can't be. Uh, yeah, this is like just more and more of that. Oh, you also have this thing align equal to top. So it aligns image, uh, the, it aligns the top of the image with the uh, top of the line. And then you have align equal to left. So it pushes the image to the left margin. Align equal to right will push to the right margin, just like bottom, which can align your uh, the bottom of the text with the bottom of the image. And then, yeah, that's that's nice. Uh, most browsers can display images of I already told you it, it is dot jpg and dot gif. Then, uh, what is this thing? Okay, you can set width and height of your images. You can also set the border of your image. You can set alignment. We already know that. So that's pretty nice. Actually, let's run this and you will see that it is actually now exciting because we are getting into actually seeing how web pages look like. So this is a normal image. And then you have some text. And then this is aligned to, I think, left. Yeah, looks like that. Then you have this thing aligned to right, and its width is uh, changed. Uh, yeah. And then this thing is once again aligned to the left. And you see the text is flowing around this image because, as I told you, it's in line, which means it like every every uh, like line worth of width of this image it's it's thought of as a uh, text or like uh, you get it you get it it's just like complicated to tell you how exactly this behaves but it's called inline so as you can see uh, where these are positioned these will affect uh, this will have an effect on the text okay that's nice so now we can put in images but that's not sufficient. We can also do more. So let's go to something else. What about like putting things like integrals and stuff like that? So for that, you need to know something about HTML entities. So first of all, when we write a basic HTML code, how does the browser understand what that code is and like what's written in there? It does that by recognizing some special characters. So it recognizes a character like uh, this less than sign, greater than sign, um, our double inverted commas, uh, and ampersand, right? This character is also special. So it has some reserved meaning, right? These characters have some reserved meaning. And there are also other characters which are like uh, not on standard keypads, but those can be displayed. So. I have displayed basically all of the characters by doing this thing. Don't do it. I used like a Python script to generate all, all this text and I just put that in this program and it will actually list out all of our characters. Like it goes all the way down. Okay, so we don't want that. 
we just want to look what what's uh, written over here so uh, and nbsp this means blank space right so uh, after and whatever is like your um, name of the characters like this is blank space and nbsp it means the blank space character uh, it's also called like uh, and hash 160 so this is like i think it's like ascii value no or is it like the utf who cares so it has some uh, numeric value right this character has some numeric value so like it's yeah you have multiple systems of doing that you have ascii it's called a sky which is in c++ uh, is this thing like that or something else who knows so anyway what i was saying is uh, the special characters you can print out these special characters uh, using these codes so like this uh, this thing this means blank space this means uh, less than sign this means greater than sign you can't print it out just by just by writing normal html because it, uh, the code uh, the code when translated by the browser it will look at the character and think oh that special character i should not display it instead i should recognize this that it's part of the code so you don't want that to happen you want it to appear like as plain text so for that you can use these things and you can also uh, you can also like print out some other forbidden <laughs> characters i don't know they are, they are not forbidden but uh, like I don't know they are in, they are just not in standard keyboards and you can still uh, print them on HTML pages so let's run this thing let's see what it does of course chrome so it does this thing yeah this is the normal stuff like whatever was written over here you can use you can print copyright the this r symbol uh, currencies some currencies like ampersand less than sign greater than sign blank spaces and now i present a list of all the html elements i mean it's not all but as many as i could yeah, yeah. so uh, these are like the codes uh, of our characters and these are the characters themselves on the right just look at them look how many these are like what kind of rubbish even is this what exactly is this thing who knows these things like it looks like it's from some other language it's not from english of course and if we keep going yeah it just gets more and more complicated oh so there was like some greek characters over there ah yes this thing this thing how would you uh, write this on html page like how would you do that of course by actually writing this code in your uh, in your like code yeah it's called code okay you cannot just type this using a standard keyboard into your code instead you have to use uh, this number to represent this character and then your browser will understand what this character is and it will display it and yeah, there's like a lot of these things. Wow. Wow. So I have only uh, written till thousand. Who knows how many these are. That's pretty nice. So now you know like how to make images, how to uh, write these like different characters that are not in standard keyboards. What about video and audio? We can also do that, right? So you can use the audio and video tags for this thing. So like like the image tag, this also needs um, SRC, which is the source. So over here, this thing, this file is the source. Uh, you have these uh, these keywords over there. So controls. If I write that in in the attributes, it will basically mean that I want to put controls on. Uh, on the web page so that i can so that the user can control uh, the video and then height and width normal stuff 
and here too in the audio you can set some attributes so you can have controls autoplay this should autoplay but it doesn't for my case i don't know and controls that will just put controls for the audio so if i run this thing yes chrome so as you can see this is a video and this is the audio so i can just play this thing yeah it's just like normal piano cover stuff not important and this is a video so these things like these are controls this is like what you see on a youtube uh and yeah like browsers have these controls for you can change the uh, the or like the volume of this audio you can change the volume of the video right okay cool that's nice Uh, yeah, that was it. That was my HTML notes, basically. Did I leave anything? No, doesn't look like that. So let's go on to C++. Actually, in fact, I think I should make a separate video for C++ because that will be huge. All right, there's like a lot of content. In fact, I should just first of all show you what the end results of learning C++ looks like. So this is a normal like application that you can make from uh, from compiling your C++ and let's just see what it does. So this application basically does this thing that it takes in a file. So I mean a file name first of all. So I will give it the path. Let's say D. D is the folder that I want to open my file in. Then what is the name of the file? I'll just say y dot html okay cool and start writing so dot html that's just i'm gonna make a html file that's why i did that so start writing i i can write whatever i want to in this thing and it will just store that text in that file so i can say like i don't know html body and i can like also do this stuff and actually there's a lot of stuff that you have to figure out how to do, like how to um, use like the character in the characters that I put in using my keyboard, how to recognize which character does what, what to do in case of each character and stuff. There's a lot of code that goes into this, but let's just see what the end result looks like. And I'm just gonna put some random stuff. Okay, cool. Then slash body of course. And yeah, I originally made this for writing normal text files, but then why not write HTML with it? Because that whole problem of saving your text files as HTML files that just get gets reduced. I mean it's not a finished product because I cannot I mean backspace to a previous line with this thing, but over time, I think I can improve it. So, who knows? Maybe it will be as good as a code editor. <laughs> no, that's just that is thinking very big. Anyway, and it's it says type close to stop writing. It's not the whole thing. In fact, you have to type close, and then either enter or just put like a space. So once I put space over there, it closes. And what did it do exactly? Well. So we will open our D directory and yeah, you can see a file Y over here and it, it has whatever I put it in it. Yeah, that random text that I typed in my body is what it's showing. If I like open it with, I don't even need to do that. Why to show the proof? You already know that that's how it was. And by the way, it was not there already. If, if you think that it was already there. That's not what it was. I, I can show you another one. Now that you have seen my D directory. Let's say you got HTML. In fact, no, just say you. That will by default create a text document. So once again, start writing. I'm gonna put some gibberish. 
Okay, cool. And then I'm gonna close this thing. C L O S E. And now that I've done that, let's see what it did to my files. So uh, D, where is it? This? Yeah, so you got U as a text file. Its default format is like text. So this is what it did. Anyway, this is a small nice application. We don't have time for a whole a whole C++ review. But let's just show you what you are going to go through. So yeah, it will take some time. Oh, come on. So hey, this is the this is the code that I used for making this application. Not important. This is my uh, my notes basically. Oh, not responding. Really? Fine. It's like we'll just stop over here. I'll see you guys in the next video.